Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Today we will see our Binac theorems. So already we know about inner product space, functionals, linear operators. So it is a continuation of linear functionals. In Hahn Binac theorem, we are having different types of Hahn Binac theorem. Before that, we need to know some definitions. So first is subadditive. If suppose we are having real valued functional P defined on a vector space X, means here we take P as a functional from X to F, where F is the field defined for the vector space X. If P is a functional and if it satisfies the property that P of X plus Y is less than or equal to P of X plus P of Y for every value of X and Y in X, then we call it as a subadditive. See generally, linear functional means P of X plus Y equal to P of X plus P of Y. But suppose if it is less than or equal to, we call it as a subadditive. That is, a, a functional is said to be subadditive if it satisfies P of X plus P of Y less than or equal to P of X plus P of Y. Now, on the same functional, we can define positive homogeneous. That is, if we are having a real valued functional P, defined on a vector space X, said to be positive homogeneous if P of alpha X equal to alpha into P of X. So here we are saying that field is R. So that's why P of alpha X, we are writing it as alpha into P of X. Suppose, the field is complex, then what happens? Instead of alpha, we might be having mod alpha. It is real, that's why we will take alpha. So if this property is satisfied, it is said to be positive homogeneous functional. Now, including these two properties, we can say that the functional P is a sublinear functional. That is, a real valued functional P defined on a vector space X is said to be sublinear functional if it's if it is subadditive and if it is positive homogeneous. Now these are the definitions for functional. Here there is a theorem on Hahn Pinach. Before this theorem there is another theorem. That theorem is the extensional functionals. Extensions of functionals. I will just tell the statement of this, then we can go to this theorem. Extensional functional is nothing but, if suppose we are having a subadditive functional, so subadditive functional say P, here we are having a vector space X, suppose Z is the subspace of X, if we define another functional F on Z, where when it is a subspace means obviously this functional will be less than or equal to this functional. Then this functional can be extended to F bar and that is the extension of functions which is also called as the hahn binach theorem on extension of functions. So we are just using that further. We are not proving this one. Now we will come to the theorem. So here, we are having generalized Hahn Binach theorem. So generalized Hahn Binach theorem statement is, suppose X be a real or complex vector space, let P be a real valued functional on defined on X, which is subadditive. Subadditive means P of X plus Y is less than or equal to P of X plus P of Y for all x and y belongs to x and satisfies the condition positive homogeneous means p of alpha x equal to mod alpha into p of x. See here, we are having x as a real or complex value, that's why we have taken here given mod alpha. Suppose there, is, there exists another functional say which is linear functional defined on a subspace x, z of x and satisfies mod f of x less than or equal to p of x. Means here, already we are having a functional p defined on x, 
navy R or navy C. We are having another functional Z2 navy R or C where Z is the subspace of X. Here it is given P is sub functional, F is linear functional. Then we know that it can be extended. Let F bar be the extension from Z to X. It is the extension of a linear functional F such that mod of F bar of X is less than or equal to P of X. This we have to prove. Now to prove this, here we come across two conditions. One of the condition is vector space may be a real vector space or vector space may be a complex vector space. If suppose vector space is a real vector space. Suppose x is a real vector space, then f is a linear functional defined on subspace of x. So when x is real, obviously its subspace is real, obviously f will be a real valued functional. Now, we have mod of f of x is less than or equal to p of x. See, generally it is given in this one. So, we are using this one. And f of x is less than or equal to p of x. Here, instead of mod f of x, we have used only f of x because f is real valued function. Now, P of alpha x equal to, we are having mod alpha P of x. So, already it is real. Here it is given alpha belongs, alpha is belonging to R. That's why alpha P of x. Now, by extension of linear functionals for real vector space, see there is a hahn Beinach theorem for extension. There exists a extension F bar. So, here directly we are using the result. So, F bar is an extension of F defined from Z to X such that F bar of X is less than or equal to P of X for all X belongs to Z. Now, from equation 2, 3 and 5. 2 is we are having P of alpha X. 3 is we are having mod F of X. And 5 is we are having F bar of X less than or equal to P of X. We can say that mod of f bar of x is less than or equal to p of x. Because if suppose alpha is negative, then also we get the same thing. Hence, we can say that this equation 4 is proved for real vector space. Now, we will see the next part of the theorem. That is B we have to take. B is complex vector space. part B that is if x is a complex vector space. If suppose x is a complex vector space obviously subspace defined on x is also complex vector space. A linear functional defined on z is also a complex linear functional. Here a complex linear functional we can write it as say f of x equal to f1 of x plus f2 of x where f1, f2 are real valued functions of z. Now, here uh, we can say that this is i. f of x equal to f1 of x plus i into f2 of x. Here where f1 and f2 are real valued functions on z. If suppose z and x are real, if we assume, we denote them as say, z bar, sorry, zr and xr, when f1 and f2 are real means they, those may be present in zr. We know that real part of any complex number is less than or equal to its absolute value. That's why f1 of x will be less than or equal to mod f of x. And already we know that mod f of x is less than or equal to p of x. Hence f1 of x is less than or equal to p of x. So, if this property is satisfied means we can make use of A. What is A? A is when X is a real valued vector space, there exists a subfunctional and on a subspace there exists a linear functional with a extension. So, let that extension be F1 bar. 
from zr to xr. So then we can say that f1 bar of x is less than or equal to p of x. If we assume that i into f1 of x plus i into means i into if we assume f of x can be written as alpha into f of x is f of alpha x can be written as f1 alpha x plus i into f2 alpha x. Now, if we take this first and last one, if we multiply i inside what we get? We get i f1 of x, i into i i square minus f2 of x. If we equate real and imaginary part, we come across minus f2 of x is equal to f1 of i x, equating real parts. Now, here we define a functional f bar for f. So, f bar of x can be written as f1 of x minus i into f1 bar of i x. Means here, plus i into f2 of x, but because of equation 10, we can write it in this manner. Now, we have to prove that f bar is the extension of f. So, for this, f bar of x we have written in this manner. So, we get f1 bar of x plus i into f2 bar of x. So, we assume that this is equivalent to f of x because of this one. So, because of equation 10, we assume that this extension is equal to f of x. Now, we, have, we are having f bar as the extension. What we have to prove is f bar is linear. So, how to prove? To prove any value to be linear, here we can prove that f of alpha x equal to alpha into f bar of x. For this, alpha is any here complex we have taken, that's why it should be a plus ib. If we in the place of alpha, if I write a plus ib, if I simplify, I come across a plus ib f bar of x, which implies alpha f bar of x. Hence, f bar is linear on x. So, f bar is linear, f bar is extension, that's why if there exists an extension f bar on a complex valued vector space, hence the theorem. So, remaining theorems we will see in the next class. So, today I will end this one.